Welcome to the 30 minute acrylic portrait where we paint a portrait in a half an hour. So glad you're here. Um, I'm excited to show you how to paint a portrait quickly and effectively and as efficiently as you can in a short time frame. Now, this is not a substitute for a portrait where you take many, many hours using the glazing technique with layers of matte medium mixed with paint, building up luminosity, shading, and depth. Rather, this is a quick exercise where we paint a la prima and we just quickly capture the gesture and the overall feeling of the subject. Uh, and we try to build up our efficiency as artists to see what's possible within 30 minutes. If you do several of these exercises um, over you know, a week's time frame, over several months, you'll, you'll get better as an artist. You'll get more efficient with every brush stroke. I would actually like to learn as I'm doing this with you and get more efficient myself. So we're gonna go on this journey together. Um, but this is gonna be a lot of fun. Today we're gonna be working on a portrait of a pensive young woman with red hair. Uh, this image was supplied by Ray Comfort at Living Waters Ministries. Uh, you can check out his website where he interviews people, shares Jesus with them. This is a still shot from a video image and I really love the expression on her face where her eyebrows are just a little bit furled and maybe just the indication of a smile on her face. Excellent lighting, uh, good cast shadows, good surface shadows and good composition. I think it's gonna make an excellent portrait. Um, so we're gonna get started here in just a moment, but before we do, I'd like to give you a gift. Thank you so much for joining, and I'd like to give you a gift to you. Thank you for that. You can grab my PDF guide. It's something you can download, you can print out, uh, called Fix Muddy Skin Tones in your acrylic portrait. So if you're struggling uh, with capturing smooth skin tones in your portrait, you have blotchiness, uh, things just aren't mixing properly on your palette, this guide is gonna help you out. Um, you can print it off, um, it has graphics and images, and then actually explains my process for making corrections to portraits. So if you're currently working on a portrait and you're struggling with it, grab this guide and you'll actually be able to use the information from it, the techniques that I teach, and make that portrait better. You can grab that at realisticacrylic.com slash fix dash muddy dash skin dash tones. And when, when you uh, upload the information, your email address, I'll send that out to you. You can print it off and use that right away. So um, it'll show you actually what causes muddy skin tones, how to fix them, and just a little bit of color theory. So go ahead and grab that today and we'll be happy to help you out. All right, let's dive into the portrait painting process. Um, I'm gonna ask a blessing on this before I get started, so let's do that and uh, we'll dive right in. Father, I ask that you would bless this portrait. Apart from you, I can do nothing. With you, I can do all things. Enable me to capture the features of this woman here quickly and effectively. Bless all the students that are watching. Take them to the next level in their portrait paintings. Let the knowledge that I'm teaching here uh, be helpful for them. And I pray you bless each and every one of them. Keep them safe, healthy, and strong, them and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So before I set up the timer, and I do have a timer here just to let you know we're painting it a la prima in 30 minutes. I'm just going to go over some of the colors I'm using here. Uh, ivory black, raw umber dark, burnt sienna, raw sienna, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, pyro red orange, Indian yellow and titanium white. And then I'm just using an assortment of brushes here, flats and rounds. And uh, we'll dive right in. Now let's set up that timer for 30 minutes. And away we go. Okay, I have the canvas, canvas pre-toned with Romber Dark, Burnt Sienna and Titanium White, just to indicate some of the flesh tones I left it bare right here, or actually, I'm going to be putting in the background uh, after, the, uh, after the fact, after I paint this, because we have just a sliver of the background showing. So I actually used the shadowed skin tone color uh, for the main background, and that's going to be most effective for us. And you can pre-tone your own canvases, it'll make it a lot easier for you 
as you do your portrait. I'm just gonna add one minute here because I actually haven't started yet. Okay, so let's start with a little bit of matte medium and romber dark and ivory black, mix them together. And we're just gonna block in the composition. Block in the forms, block in the anatomy. And we want this to be fairly light. All right. So we have a negative space up here. This is the border of her hair. We want to put that in. And let's just get that a little more opaque. I'll add just a bit of titanium white and raw sienna. Okay. And then we will Lock in this major form here. So we've got her hair. This is the top of her hair. Uh, it's just barely gonna touch the canvas. Actually won't, we'll have a little bit of space there. We have the right side of her hair. Here's the far edge. I'm gonna add just a bit of alizarin crimson to that. And we have the far edge here. And then this is going to come out a little bit. So we want to make sure we have the shape of her hair correct and the jawline. Now that's going to be very important is to capture this. So I want to kind of identify where her chin is going to be at in the composition. We'll say right about here. And we'll have this part of her right side of her face, left side, this strong angle here of her jaw. We want to capture that. Maybe it comes up a little higher, that apex there. We have the hair. Now here we have a strong value, strong contrast where we can see the highlight on her hair. We wanna identify that and block that in. We have the shadow right here that comes down to almost the bottom. Then we have her neck. And we've got a little bit of her hair poking out here. Strong shadow for the neck. And then we have her hair coming down and we look at that shape it makes, the contour. And the negative spaces are important. You wanna also see those negative spaces. That's the difference between the contour, the outside contour of her hair and the background. And just look at that shape, that sliver that it makes. And that'll really help you to capture the overall proportions. Now, let's take a look at her facial features. We're gonna block those in. And we're going to just look at the overall spacing here. We say this is maybe the line of the eyes is two thirds of the way up, something like that. So about two thirds of the way up, we're just gonna Put in a couple of marks for her eyes, the eyebrows, the nose. Just gonna thin this down with a little bit of matte medium just so I can have a little wiggle room if I don't get my first markings accurate. Okay, here's the other part. This is the right eye, of course. We wanna look at that long nose that she's got identify where the bottom of that nose should be. We'll say right about there. And here is the mouth. That nose comes down. The shape of the mouth is important. Okay, and we want, want to also identify this very strong cast shadow here. So that shape is important. That's gonna curve around right there, right there. And then we have the other piece that flows right here. And then we have that 
shadow on the other side. We have a shadow on her forehead. We'll just kind of block that in as well. We have this strong shape for her chin and her nose. Let's just bring that lip down a little bit here. All right, and we have that chin shape, nose. Want to get this contour correct right there. And just uh, really capture that eyebrow a little bit stronger. Okay, we've got this form for the highlight of her hair suggested. This highlight here, this is all shadow. Uh, we just want to block in a couple forms for the other side of her hair. Shadow right there, right there. A little bit of her ear poking up right there. Okay, so that gives us enough information to work with. Now I'm gonna to switch to my Filbert brush and I'm gonna fill in the shadows. Well, we already kind of have the shadows in there with the ground that we use, the background toning layer that we put on before starting the painting. So actually I'm gonna work in the highlights. Uh, let's take some titanium white, raw sienna, a little bit of burnt sienna. So this is our major highlights for the skin tones. And a nice way to test your color, you can just put it on a color chip, just a little piece of uh, computer paper or um, cardstock, and just kind of test your color out. Make sure it matches one of the mid-tones. So we're just gonna use this right here, and then we're gonna block this in. I'm gonna just add a little bit of pyro red orange to that, just make it a bit pinker. A little bit of pyro red orange. Love that color. You can also use cadmium red medium as well if you don't have pyro red orange. That's a color you can get at Nova Color, which is where I buy my paints. Excellent paint. Excellent paint. I've been using it for over 20 years. I don't get a commission for mentioning it. They just make good paint. They sell it at very, very low prices compared to other paints like Liquitex, Golden, and Windsor and Newton, very, very low priced, but very high quality paint. Got a lot of students that love it. And they say it's some of the best paint they've ever used. So I just mention it because I love it. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna block in these highlights here. Major highlights for her face. Just spread that paint out using short choppy strokes and then some longer smoothing strokes. Cut up around the eyebrows a little bit here. Get into the highlighted portion. Okay, I'm gonna just need to mix up a little more. Titanium white, little burnt sienna, pyro red orange. Just try to replicate that same color spray my palette a little bit because I have my wood heater running, my outdoor wood stove that pipes in heated air, and boy, it dries everything out in the studio. Because here in Wisconsin, it is getting cold now. It's down to about 20 degrees at night, 40 during the day. So when I get in the studio, it's, it's pretty cool. It's about 55 degrees in here. A little too, too chilly to be painting, so. I just fire up that wood stove and away we go. All right, we're getting in some highlights here. Again, working around the shadow shapes. Now, if we get the contours wrong, we can always adjust that later. But I just wanna block in everything as smoothly as I can. Okay, and now let's get the little section on the other side. Now we wanna darken that because it's surrounded by dark values. And so it's gonna jump out too much if it's too bright. So we're gonna add a little bit of pyro red orange, 
and burnt sienna. We just darken that shadow a little bit on the other side. We use the flat edge of the brush. All right, and that just gives us a little bit of something to work out of here. Add a tiny bit of a highlight on the bottom. Okay, and now let's block in the structure for her hair. Rinse off the brush. And let's use some ivory black, raw umber dark, mix them together with just a little bit of raw sienna to make it more opaque and ultramarine blue and a bit of alizarin crimson. And that's a good rich mix of color. And we can just block that in into the shadow areas. So we just blocked it in right here into all the areas we previously designated with our rough brush sketch. And we just continue this up, try to smooth it out because you can see through it ever so slightly. And just continue this up Fill in that contour of her hair on the top. Then we bring this down on the other side, like that. Put in just a hint of this color along the edge of her jaw right there. A little bit in here. And then there's just a few areas down here as well. Let that flow off the edge of the canvas. It's always good compositionally to do that. You don't want to have shadows or important things hugging the edge of the canvas. It should either be a little distance away or it should flow off naturally. We can get just a little bit of this right here as well. Just flow that in right there. Okay. Now we want to work in the lighter color for her hair. That would be the mid-tone. So we have the shadow, we'll work in the mid-tone. And hopefully if we have time, we can do the highlight. So let's take uh, titanium white, pyro red orange, burnt sienna, alizarin crimson. She has that nice red hair. A little more burnt sienna. A little more burnt sienna. All right, we'll just work that in right here and there and there. It's going to look pretty pink, <laughs> but we're going to also work in a couple other colors. So uh, stay with me here. All right, now let's uh, add a little bit of raw umber dark and burnt sienna to the mix. A little more raw umber dark. Just a bit of alizarin crimson. And then let's get some slightly darker and warmer tones. A little more alizarin crimson here. Just a bit of pyro red orange and some matte medium to help it flow. And we'll just get a couple of nuances in here while this is somewhat wet. Okay, a little bit of a darker color right here. We'll put these shadow colors along the left edge based on the light source. Couple of darker colors at the bottom. Get a darker color there to flow in. All right. And then we'll get a little more of a golden brown color at the top with some burnt sienna 
and just a little bit of raw sienna. And I gotta spray this paint because it dries out so fast. We'll just turn this a bit. We got 15 minutes left right now. We're in good shape. Thank God for every minute I have. Every breath, every heartbeat, just thank God for that. When I wake up, I like to say that to God. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of a new day. And uh, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Thank you for every breath, every heartbeat, because none of these things are guaranteed. And so, as I'm painting, I'm thankful for the time that I have to paint, the time I have to spend with you. It's a gift. It really is. So, a little bit of raw umber dark and burnt sienna. And we're just going to keep this flowing here and just add a bit of a darker tone on the left-hand side. And it should get just a bit darker right there. Okay. And I just want to flow a little bit of this darker color into the bottom and blend out with that. Just flow that in, and this as well. And a little bit of this color right here on the edge. Okay, now let's work on her face. So we're gonna add in a couple of nuances, both in the shadow areas and the highlight areas. Let's go into the highlight areas. That looks like that's pretty important. We'll take some titanium white and just a bit of Indian yellow to warm it up. Spray that palette again. All right. And we're gonna put these highlights right in here. And just try to capture some of the expression on her forehead. Little highlight right here, right there. We want to get that cheek, the volume there captured. Little highlight right there. And we're just going to blend this into that darker part of the skin tone that I have left. Just kind of flow that in together. Just blend it together. And here we can get a little bit of a blend of gradation on the top and get a couple of the worry lines just suggested here, these transverse forehead furrows. And we have the vertical forehead furrows as well. The frown lines, we get those kind of captured in. Just using a couple little highlights here on the edge of the brush. And a little bit of the wing of the nose captured. We'll add a little highlight right there on that part of the cheek. Highlight on the eye. Okay. Now, let's do a little work on the shadow. So, I'm gonna take my shadow color. This is from when I toned the canvas. I'm just gonna see if I can get some of that to come out on the palette. There it is right there. Raw umber dark, titanium white, little bit of burnt sienna, and a bit of ivory black. Now we're gonna add a little bit of uh, raw umber dark and ivory black. Tone it a bit darker with just a bit of alizarin crimson and see what we get here. We need a little more alizarin crimson. All right. And we just put that in right there just to get that nasolabial fold on her face. We'll get a little bit of the shadow color here around the edge of her chin. We want to darken that chin in. A little more ivory black, alizarin crimson. And we'll just darken that shadow under the chin like that. All 
right, and darken this edge up against the hair a little bit more. Blend that in. Okay, now we want to get a little bit of shading up against the edge of her face right there. Develop some volume on that side. A little shading on the interior of the eye right here. And right there. We're going to sculpt the edge of that chin a little more with some raw umber dark and alizarin crimson right here. Just cut that in right there. There we go. Okay, now let's work with the round brush and we'll do just a bit of work on her eyes. I'll take some raw umber dark, alizarin crimson, spray the palette. Just keep that nice and moist. I don't like using paint retarders. I want it to dry quickly, but I do like it to be wet on my palette. So we take that color there and just get in some detail work for her eyes. Get in the form of the eyes just a bit there. Now the other one. Shadow right here, strong shadow from the sun. And it leaves just a little bit of a highlight. We'll add a little bit of a warmer tone here with some burnt sienna that's a little lighter for that upper eyelid fold crease. There we go. Block in the eyebrows a little stronger on both eyes. Just try to get that expression in her face a little bit more clearly. Now let's work on her lip and just get a little bit more of the form of the lip. Okay, we'll switch to a little bit of the pinkish color. We'll use the hair color for that. Just a bit of titanium white. Get that color of her lip in there. A little bit of a darker color here. Get the top lip in. Okay, we'll just get that bottom part of the lip. Some alizarin crimson and raw umber dark right here. So it's got that shadow shape. All right. And let's just smooth out some of these shadows here. I'm going to take some burnt sienna, add it to the mid-tone color with just a bit of pirate red orange. We're just going to smooth this shadow shape out a bit. And I'm going to need to darken that more just to get rid of that edge that I had. All right, we're just going to smooth out this edge by her nose. Add a little bit of a pinkish tint here. There we go. A little bit of a pinkish tint here. It's nice to have those warmer colors right by the juxtaposition where you have shadows and midtones and highlights. Adds a little more depth to them. We'll get in the nasolabial fold right there. A little bit of a reddish tint right here and a stronger color right under her eyebrow. Stronger yet, let's pull from this part of the palette. It's got to be a little deeper and darker in value. A 
All right. And we're gonna get a little bit of this warmer color right on her chin. Now we're gonna blend that in to the mid-tone ever so slightly. Let's get in that bluish color of her eyes. That's important. Titanium white, a little bit of ultramarine blue. Ivory black and raw umber dark to tone it down so it's not too strong. We'll put this in right here. Ivory black for the eye that's in shadow. You want to make sure that you've got the correct value when you have areas in shadow. Actually, the tone can be a little less intense. We'll add some raw or dark to that just to tone down the intensity of that blue. And then let's add a little bit of uh, little bit of ivory black right here. I just want to get that pupil in and that shadow. All right. I want to go back to the lip really quick with a bit of pyro red orange and alizarin crimson and just suggest that shape a little more accurately. We'll lighten it up on this side, pulling from this lighter part of the mix. And then rinse off my brush, add a bit of a highlight with titanium white, pyro red orange, and a touch of Indian yellow. Just a touch. And we're gonna add that right here, just to get that highlight color in the lip a little bit. Bring that down, a slightly darker color. All right, now I just want to get a little bit of a highlight here around her eyes. So titanium white, bit of Indian yellow, and we'll just put this highlight in right there. Right there on the top. A little bit of highlight right here on the other eye, that's important. Highlight on the top right there. And we want to use, just suggest the eyebrow color a bit more, so we're going to use this darker skin tone rather than black or dark brown for the eyebrow. I'm just going to get in this slightly darker shadow right here. Suggest the shape of the eye socket a little bit more. Spray that palette quick. And we'll just get in that bit of her nostril right there. And then on her upper lip, we've got a bit of a different color in the shadow. I want to suggest that in there just around the philtrum. A little bit of burnt sienna. And we'll just add this shadow right there. Just darken this area a little bit right here. I have to just use a slightly darker color. There we go. And we're getting close to the end of the timer here. All right, with the time we have left, let's put in a little bit of a different background color. We'll just use something, something kind of gray. I'll separate this out a little bit. Or bluish in this case, I guess. Go with a little bit lighter on the bottom. Just suggest your shoulder 
right here with a darker color and that comes up to about there. And just use a slightly redder color there for the edge of the hair. All right, with the time I have left, just put a couple of uh, nuances. Whoa. All right, that's it. <laughs> I'm gonna stop off right here. We're gonna stop off right here. And this is what we have for the portrait. All right, and you can see what we've achieved here in 30 minutes. Um, again, there are areas in the portrait that I would like to address and you know adjust certain forms but overall, I really like how it turned out for 30 minutes. I think I've captured the essence here of this young woman, the pensiveness in her face, the lighting structure. And you know what's nice about these 30 minute acrylic portraits is you actually can go in and you can add more nuances to it. So if you want to, and you want to um, continue the portrait, you like what you have started, there's nothing stopping you from taking another half an hour, another hour, or even five hours to really tighten it up and make the portrait something incredibly amazing and impressive that you know you can put up on your wall, enter into an art competition. Uh, but then what you will have gained by doing this 30 minute exercise is you will have developed the portrait a lot faster and uh, also gain the ability to be efficient in your brush strokes. So, uh, whether you want to use this for an exercise or a foundation for a painting, that's up to you. But it's just a lot of fun doing these quick 30-minute portraits. So that's where we're at today. I want to say thank you so much for watching this episode of the 30-Minute Acrylic Portrait. Um, I'd love to see your work. I'd love to keep in touch with you. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, share it with your friends. Grab that free PDF guide, Fix Your Muddy Skin Tones in Your Acrylic Portrait. It's right at the bottom of this video here in the description and the top comment. Go ahead and grab that free guide and I look forward to sharing with you again the 30-minute acrylic portrait. Have a great rest of your day. God bless.